Part 1. Medium A. Starting the symbiotic culture of chlorella algae and baker's yeast we will begin by culturing pure chlorella algae in a conical flask with vigorous aeration and the proper dosage of fertilizers. Chlorella algae can be seen and collected from any stagnant water body where there is a good amount of sunlight. There is no need to obtain pure culture starter as we will go through a simple process that will eliminate all other organisms in the culture. Chlorella as it is is the most dominant algae in the water body and naturally eliminate any other algae of the same category. To get rid of rotifers, infusoria and any other organism we will use a high dosage of fertilizer, three times the prescribed dosage to begin with. That is for 100 liters of water we will use 45 grams of ammonium sulfate, 9 grams of sodium triple phosphate and 4.5 grams of urea. The chlorella is seeded in the aerated conical flask and allowed to propagate. The light source used is a 36 watt fluorescent lamp. In the presence of high concentration of NPK elements only the chlorella can propagate and any other organism is wiped out but initially the rate of propagation is slow. But quickly catch up to optimal rate as the chlorella propagates and the NPK concentration decreases. After 48 hours the chlorella algae culture becomes vibrant green and is at its peak in terms of propagation rate. It is the right time to introduce the molasses and turn the culture in a mixotropic culture. A mixotropic culture of chlorella algae means that the chlorella is able to absorb carbon through the process of photosynthesis and also being able to absorb carbon from the glucose present in the molasses through the process of heterotropic metabolism, and through this process of heterotropic metabolism, glucose is converted to fatty acids and stored in the chlorella algae. At this stage 1 milliliters of molasses is added per liter of aerated chlorella algae culture and let to stand for the next 48 hours. The reason for this is that chlorella do not instantly absorb glucose and a time frame of 48 hours is normally required to observe the presence of fatty acids in the chlorella. After this 48 hours. 2 milliliters of molasses is added every 12 hours for the next 48 hours. After this 48 hours there will be an emulsion formed at the top of the conical flask and this emulsion is mainly fatty acids from dead chlorella algae. Now the culture is rich in fatty acids from the chlorella in heterotropic condition. This high-density chlorella culture is also producing a lot of dissolved oxygen apart from the oxygen brought through aeration. The mixture is now saturated in dissolved oxygen from photosynthesis by the chlorella. At this stage all the glucose from the culture medium has been absorbed and converted into fatty acids and this is very important because even in high oxygen environment when glucose exceeds a certain concentration fermentation will take place and alcohol will be produced. Now yeast can be seeded into the aerated culture medium, baker's yeast is used. Seed the culture vessel with 0.5 grams per liters of dry yeast. In the presence of oxygen, fructose and sucrose, the yeast will propagate releasing carbon dioxide and the symbiotic relationship can take place. Please make sure that the dry yeast used is instant dry yeast. The culture medium is kept aerated for another 12 hours for the equilibrium to settle. For the sake of visual indicators, we have moved part of the culture medium into a test tube and sealed it with a coke. 
after two hours bubbles of oxygen can be seen onto the surface of the test tube. These bubbles are not in the dissolved state as the, the medium is saturated in oxygen and cannot absorb more of the oxygen produced. This is the indication that the culture is in symbiosis. The propagation rate of both chlorella and yeast are at peak and the medium is saturated in oxygen. At this point it has taken 108 hours, almost 5 days to set up the symbiotic culture between chlorella and yeast. The culture should be kept going with the aeration and regular additions of molasses at a rate of 1 milliliter every 12 hours as this culture, medium A, will be used to seed the future Moina photobioreactors, there will be no need to start the process again each time a Moina photobioreactor has to be set up. Medium A has all the characteristics to support the culture of filter feeders, from infusoria and rotifers to Moina and Daphina. For any freshwater fish breeder medium A will ease their work and increase the rate of success because medium A provides a clean source of food for the the first food of fish fries that is infusoria and rotifers. Part 2. Starting the Moina photobioreactor A closed airtight transparent vessel is used to start the Moina photobioreactor. It is important that the culture vessel is able to be completely sealed after the medium is seeded with the chlorella, yeast and Moina. For this, a clear plastic bottle is most practical. The oxygen produced through photosynthesis is in dissolved form and readily available to the yeast and Moina and the carbon dioxide produced during metabolic respiration by yeast is also in dissolved form available for chlorella. When the vessel is completely airtight, the gases produced cannot escape and thus stays in dissolved form throughout the culture medium and unlike in traditional culture techniques, oxygen availability is independent on depth. When the medium cannot contain more dissolved gases, bubbles are formed on the vessel as shown in part 1. The plastic transparent bottle here has a diameter of 10 cm. For photosynthesis, a 36 watt lamp is placed 20 cm away from the plastic bottle. Medium B is prepared by dissolving 1 milliliters of molasses per liters of dechlorinated water at a temperature between 27 to 31 degrees Celsius. The concentration of glucose in medium B is initially just low enough to prevent the fermentation of glucose by yeast to form alcohol because in the starter phase of the Moina photobioreactor, oxygen is not as readily available as after 24 to 36 hours and beyond. In the transparent airtight vessel, a ratio of 25% of medium A from part 1 is mixed with 75% of medium B. Moina is added. The amount of Moina seeded into the photobioreactor is extremely important. Too much Moina per liters will use up all the chlorella and yeast at the initial stage. What we want is to have the symbiotic culture between yeast and chlorella to be least affected by Moina at the initial stage. For simplicity and not to get into the dynamics of the, the Moina and chlorella propagation, as a rule, see the culture vessel with 100 moina per liters. We will now look at the propagation of the moina when it is in a rich environment of fatty acids, proteins and oxygen same as in the photobioreactor but for better understanding we will observe it in a petri dish which is airtight and has the same environment as in the photobioreactor. For simplicity we will observe the propagation of one moina born from a previous photobioreactor. The petri dish contain a volume of 20 milliliters of 25% of medium A and 75% of medium B. After 36 hours the moina has reproduced, and when moina is kept in such environment it produces an average of 27 moina nopoli per brood. The reason for large broods is due to the high content of fatty acids in the culture medium from heterotropic metabolism of chlorella. At the same time chlorella and yeast are propagating at a tremendous rate. 
Within 36 hours the color of the culture medium is already a solid pale green. This color change is not visible on the petri dish due to the small depth and the bright light. After 48 hours the culture medium in the photobioreactor is solid dark green and the the culture density of chlorella and yeast have reached their peak along with the saturation of dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide. Between 48 to 60 hours the Nopli are already adults and ready to produce a new brood. The speed at which the new brood reach maturity is the combined effect of an environment rich in nutrients and dissolved oxygen and as Moina are unselective filter feeders, as they move they absorb nutrients to grow or reproduce. The color of the culture medium changes to a transparent brownish green. After 72 hours density of Moina takes over the system and absorb all of the chlorella and yeast. Note that molasses is not the limiting factor as it is still in excess after 72 hours. Oxygen is still present after 72 hours and the culture can stand idle for another 8 hours, up to a total of 80 hours. At this point, the content of the photobioreactor can be directly fed to fish fries and adult fishes. As reference we will use the zebra danios fish as candidate to test the nutritional value of the moina produced from the photobioreactor. 1 liters of moina produced from the photobioreactor can feed 1000 of zebra danios fish daily from larval stage to fully adult stage. Zebra danios fries were able to feed on the moina nopli as early as 3 days after free swimming stage. Zebra danios fed on the moina as sole nutrition were able to produce their first offspring at the age of 47 days compared to those fed on brine shrimps which is documented to reach maturity around 60 days. The survival rate was significantly higher when compared to those fries fed on brine shrimps which may be due to the better water quality and continuous availability of food. Moina does not foul water and keeps on producing nopli even in the fry raising tank. It is important to note that the labor involved when raising fries fed on moina is significantly decreased because there is less frequent feeding required and lesser water changes. Other fish species have been tested such as angelfish, ramarezi, guppies, black tetra and goldfish to test the performance of moina from the photobioreactor in terms of growth and survival rate. The results were compared with offspring grown on brine shrimps. Both, growth rate and survival rate of fish larvae were significantly higher on moina. Angelfish for example had a larval stage period of only 12 days when fed on moina from the photobioreactor as compared to those fed on brine shrimps had a larval stage of 20 days. The survival rate on moina was higher. On 100 offspring from the same parents, those grown on moina from the photobioreactor had a survival rate of 97% and those raised on brine shrimps had a survival rate of 85%.